Basically, neutral density filters are sunglasses for your camera. It darkens things so that you can slow down the shutter without soaking in too much light and ruining things. Now, this is just icing on the cake, but it's something I notice because I have to edit footage all day long. If footage is shot with a really high shutter speed, anything moving in the shot will look really choppy. That's because there's a ton of light and you only have to expose each individual frame for like 1 1200th of a second to get a well-lit frame of video. Then it does it 24 times in a second and you have a moving picture with lots of choppy, chunky looking footage. Cinematic footage is usually double the shutter speed of whatever you're filming at. So 24 frames per second, it'll be like 1 50th shutter. 60 frames per second would be 1 120th. Point is it's double the frame rate. This gives a very soft, gentle blur on everything that is much more pleasing to the eye. Again, most people won't notice it and if you don't care, fine, no problem. But usually a professional will be able to tell. In broad, broad daylight, my shutter is normally 1 1250th, but with a 32 grad ND filter, I can film at 1 50th of a shutter for 24 frames per second footage. On a normal camera, you could just lower the aperture to darken the footage, but the Mavic doesn't give you that option since it doesn't have a real aperture. It films at a rigid aperture of 2.8 all the time. It really takes a 32 grad ND filter, which is like a lot. It's $15 on Amazon. The brand I have is called Hushion. Works great so far. I got a 64 grad ND as well. Serves no purpose. I have no idea why I got it. With this, the shutter has to be like 1 5th of a second, which is ridiculous. Anyway, I also have a pack of polarizing filters. How are these different? Well, for one, they give you the neutral density sunglasses deal the same way, but you also have a happy bonus feature. Polarization works, I guess you could say it's like shutters in your house. If they're pointed down, you can see people outside, but they can't see you. Anyway, if you twist the lens on the camera, you have varying degrees of polarization. This limits brights and it gives things kind of like an HDR appeal. The sky or clouds will be much less bright or harsh this way, but everything else will be lit normally. Whereas an ND filter, it brings down overall brightness across the board. This is a weird one to use for a sample, but I'm actually really impressed with this shot. My head glare alone has fried sensors, but this filter is balancing out the brights really well. I might put the 16 on the lens on a really cloudy day. It's not as bright as pure total midday sunlight, so it doesn't need to be a whole 32 ND, but 16 is still enough to let you slow the shutter quite nicely. If you put it over your eye and roll it left and right, you'll see that one side looks really funky looking like HDR and the opposite end looks like nothing's done to it. I put it like halfway and it seems to be fine. Sadly, the trees in these clouds were the best case I could see of it helping strongly. So in this lineup of shots, I've got the regular 32 ND filter and then the 16 polarized filter turned the whole way with maximum polarization. I guess the sky looks a little less blown out and a little bluer, but it did a weird thing to the roofs on the buildings. The whites came out super strong on the building tops. The trees look nice though. And then turned the opposite way with the least polarization. So it kind of works like a regular 16 ND filter. The polarizer put kind of a green filter on my footage, but of course you can look at it yourself and grade it if you want. On those big, wide, far away shots, yes, it lets the sky feel less white and bright, but sometimes it looks kind of artificial. I mean, it just looks like something's wrong. And ironically, I couldn't find any in between. It either made my footage greener and strangely exposed, or it made things look really nice and even, and I don't know why. It's also tough to know how much polarization you need. You know, you could actually tell better with the leaves on the trees in that other shot. I don't know if you can see it that well here. If you're filming a ton of trees and foliage, things with glares, then a polarizing filter is handy for you. It's a cool toy to have if you want to try it, but I'm just going to stick to the standard 32 ND filter. I have some sample footage for you to download and look at if you don't want to trust YouTube's 4K compression. It might be sharper if you just look at it yourself on your desktop. Anyways, download links are below. You just have to put in your email so that the server will dispatch the file link.